Hi everybody, Lawyer Autumn Whit Boyd here. I am back with our weekly Facebook Live and uh, podcast episode, Legal Roadmap podcast episode. So welcome wherever you are tuning in. I am super excited about the last couple episodes of the year because I am going to be giving you some behind the scenes insights into what we have learned with the AWB firm working with seven and eight figure clients. So we have kind of, we are in the, what I would call the catbird seat. We get to see all kinds of really interesting things that our clients are doing. We are often seeing them before they're live because they bring us in to help make sure that they are doing the right things ahead of time. And so I am today sharing um, four secrets, four behind the scenes insights about what our seven figure clients know that you don't and how you can use some of those insights, some of these secrets um, in your own business as you are trying to grow. Maybe you wanna grow your own seven or eight figure business. Maybe you wanna stay uh, at five figures or six figures. Um, but either way, I think some of these things that I'm gonna talk about today would be useful no matter where you are in your business and will help you build whatever kind of sustainable, profitable business that you are trying to build. That is what we are all about here uh, at the AWB firm, is helping people build whatever kind of business they want, but building a real solid business on the strong foundation so that you can keep it running, so that you're not just a splash in the pan, so that you can provide for your family and build the kind of life that you are dreaming about. So let's dig in. Uh, and full disclaimer, I'm not really talking about much legal stuff in this episode, but I'll give my standard disclaimer, which is that I am a lawyer. I am licensed to practice law in Tennessee, but I'm not your lawyer. Nothing in this episode is legal advice. So if you have questions, if this sparks things that you want to think about, please talk with your own lawyer, whether it's me or someone else. All right. So the first thing that we are seeing with our seven and eight figure, um, clients is that they have a team and they aren't afraid to use it. So before I um, started preparing for this episode, I put out a call on my Instagram and in our Facebook group and um, about what, what are people curious about? What are you wanting to know about with um, these seven and eight figure clients? Um, and so one of the questions I got over and over was how are these people either moving from a personal brand to a more sustainable business, because a lot of us start out as just a one man or one woman show, um, how are they moving through that? Or was there kind of a critical shift or a critical investment or change that I have seen um, that has really allowed people to scale? And I will say this is the number one thing that we are seeing, especially with our seven and eight figure clients. Um, they have a team and they are not afraid to use it. Um, and what that looks like is as they get bigger, maybe they had cobbled together a team of contractors. Maybe they had, um, you know, they were still doing most of the things in the business themselves. Um, but as they are scaling, um, you know, I think that you can kind of bootstrap yourself to mid six figures, maybe even high six figures. But once you're at seven figures and above, um, you will just hit burnout. You just cannot keep doing all the things yourself. And it really is even at that point, pretty hard to keep running your business with just a team of contractors kind of coming in and pinch hitting for launches here and there. Um, they are starting to build really solid teams that are now employees that are in the business all the time and that are actually running parts of the business. So uh, I think it, as, as businesses are building to that level, we often bring in subject matter experts. So we might bring in a virtual assistant who is good at administrative tasks. And so we can stop doing those things. We might bring in a copywriter for just a launch or maybe just a part of our website, a sales page or an email sequence. Um, but what I see with these seven figure businesses is they are moving from a virtual assistant to maybe an executive assistant. So not only is that person just coming in to handle administrative things, but they are handling the, the um, founder or the CEO's calendar. They are handling their inbox. Um, they are pretty much managing a lot of the day to day. Um, and there's three other areas that I often see people bringing in team members, um, again, not contractors, but real employees. And that is um, either a business manager or someone doing operations. It could be called a COO. It could be called an operations manager. There's lots of different things. Sometimes we call these integrators. 
lots of different titles and this does not look the same within every business. Um, but typically that person is going to be focusing on the delivery of the product. So what is the business actually doing or selling? So if you're selling an online course, how are you delivering the course? Um, you may have customer service people under that. Um, so again, as you're scaling, you have to have more customers or you have to have fewer customers at a very high dollar amount. Either way, you are going to need some help on delivery of your products or services and customer support. So those are two areas that I definitely see. The other thing is I will often see um, with my clients, a lot of them are real experts at marketing. That is how they grew to where they are. But even if that is their zone of genius and everything I'm talking about is really kind of filling in gaps in the founder or the CEO's zone of genius. So you can't be good at everything, I, I can almost guarantee. Um, so often, even if you are really good at marketing or really good at content creation, you would need to bring in either a marketing director, um, you know, vice president of marketing. Again, these titles are very fluid, but someone who's actually handling the day-to-day -day of marketing, who's project managing, who is making sure that things are getting done and getting done on time. And um, you know, if you are launching an online course, if you've ever been through that, you know that there are a lot of parts and pieces. There's email sequences, there's landing pages, their sales pages, there's probably a webinar or some sort of challenge or you know, something that you're doing leading up to it. So um, typically you will have a person managing that who is now not the founder. Um, so that's kind of the marketing or the content creation side. And then uh, the last piece, and I think that a lot of us don't think about this unless we're on this side, which I am, is uh, building a bench of advisors. So often you won't have these people in-house. None of my clients have um, an in-house CFO or legal, um, you know, they don't have in-house counsel, but um, they will be building their bench out of professional advisors. So that may look like a finance person, whether that's a CFO, a bookkeeper, um, you know, an outsourced person who is looking at the numbers, helping make sure that all the reporting is correct so that when the CEO needs to make a decision or is trying to analyze what's going on and looking at next steps, they have the right information. And all of this really is supporting uh, the CEO becoming more of a visionary and kind of setting the strategy, setting the vision, but not actually doing all the things anymore. Uh, and even with my eight figure clients, I'm seeing there's a level in between the CEO and the doers. So now there is kind of a management level. And I know a lot of us left corporate because <laughs> we didn't love having all these layers and meetings and reports and all these things. But um, I will tell you, there's a reason that they are used in corporate and that is because they help a business run like a well-oiled machine. And I think for a lot of us who are maybe in the low six figure range or maybe working to get to six figures, um, you can kind of keep all those balls in the air, but as you grow, as you have more customers, as your revenue gets higher, you just can't do it. And so, especially as you're scaling to eight figures or maybe even more, nine figures, um, you have got to have those levels of people managing and making sure that things are getting done correctly, that they're getting done on time, that they are up to the quality that you are promising and that everybody is working well together. So um, that is the number one thing. They have a team and they aren't afraid to use it, whether that is um, help with operations, sales, marketing, and also professional advisors. All right, the second thing that I see in my seven and eight figure clients is that they spend time with people who are further ahead of them in business. So um, they might be in a mastermind, they may be working with a coach, they may be going to events. There's all kinds of different ways that we spend time with people in business. But what I see with my seven and eight figure clients is that they are very proactive about seeking out people who are at the level that they want to be at or ahead. And they, um, they may also spend time with peers. I think there is also value in spending time with your peers, especially if they um, you know, are in slightly different industries or you can learn different things from their area of expertise. But what I see my seven and eight figure clients doing is really focusing their time, their energy, and their money on learning from people who are further ahead than they are. Um, and I think you, you know, you've probably heard the saying that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. If the five people you spend the most time with are at the same level of business that you are, it is going to be very difficult for you to figure out how to get to the next step. So um, 
I see my seven and eight figure clients spending time with people who are ahead of them in business. And I see them being willing to invest in um, making those connections. So whether that is, again, going to an in-person event, signing up for a mastermind, um, hiring a coach, there's lots of different ways. But as you get to this level, those, uh, those connections are typically not accidental. They are pretty intentional and they often come with a price tag because, um, you know, you get exclusivity. You get, you don't get access to the people who are making eight or nine figures, um, just at your neighborhood coffee shop or at the local, you know, small business meetup. It is typically going to be a paid opportunity. The third thing that I see my seven and eight figure clients uh, doing is that they are proactive. So this kind of builds on what I was just talking about. They are doing things now and they are making their plans for 2020 uh, based on the business that they want in one year, five years or 10 years. So they are long sighted. I don't know if that's, uh, I always get them mixed up nearsighted and farsighted, but they are looking far down the road is what I mean. Um, and so some examples of this, and again, um, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but I'm not sharing anything confidential from any of our clients. We work with some big names and I'm not sharing any secrets today. Um, these are more insights really than secrets. Uh, but what I see them doing is, so let's say they are planning to launch a product. I'm recording this in November, but we've got, we're coming up on a lot of January launches. We'll see that after everybody's over the holidays and we're back in business building mode. So what I see my clients doing now is that they are working on list building. So they are trying to grow their audience so that when they are ready to launch whatever they're launching in January, or they're doing a promotion or a sale, lots of different ways. Um, but typically there is some sort of, um, you know, urgency, either a discount or a promotion that's going to be happening in January. Um, they are working now on laying the foundation so that they make sure that that goes well. And same thing when I'm talking about what they wanna do in five years or 10 years. Um, when I talk with my clients about what the, what is coming up, a lot of the clients who are um, selling online courses now are looking to build a community, a membership community. They're looking at recurring revenue streams rather than having to be so um, dependent on having a large launch of just a course. I see a lot of them working on authority building activities. So some of my more successful clients are focused on um, getting a book deal. And this is not, they don't want to self-publish. They want a traditional publisher because it builds their authority. And one way that you can scale is by having more authority. It gets you in front of more people. It gives you another, a, a low cost way to um, get in front of people and to start building your kind of value ladder. Um, I see clients um, who have been all online looking at doing live events, whether that's a small group like a mastermind or a retreat or a big conference. So you'll see um, building your business and scaling can look like a lot of different things. And so I'm what I'm not seeing is everyone doing the same thing. I am definitely seeing, um, you know, people trying new things and experimenting and um, looking at new offers and maybe retiring old offers because we can't do all the things. That's another thing I see with my seven and eight figure clients is they they don't have 900 offers. They maybe have two or three. Um, and the, the top level ones are often kind of secret and exclusive and you have to go through the lower levels to get to the higher levels. Um, but that is what I see. I see them um, looking far in the future and putting the groundwork in place now for the business that they want to build. The other thing I see them do that supports that is, and this, come, this is where I often come in, is we are locking things down legally early. So if a client comes to me and tells me that they want to launch a membership next year or they have a new course or some other kind of offer, a new conference, um, we will talk about registering the trademark now before it's even public, which is something you can do. Um, before you've even sold something, you can start the process. Um, if they tell me they've got a new podcast or they're working on a book, same thing. Um, book titles are tricky to register as a trademark, but it is possible, especially if um, for some of our clients, they are wanting to kind of build a whole ecosystem around a book. So you've seen this with um, like Danielle Laporte and her, um, well now I can't think of it. Uh, <laughs> this is my favorite example. Um, the desire map. There we go. 
Um, with Danielle D Laporte's book, The Desire Map, she not only has the book, which is also a workbook, but she um, has a licensing program built around that. So she trains facilitators who pay her money to be uh, able to go teach workshops and do things under that brand. And so that is a whole ecosystem built around that book. So I do have clients who are working on that. And that is something that takes some time and some forethought to build that ecosystem. But that's what I see people doing. They're thinking about what do I want this to be in five years, not just, oh, I'm trying to do uh, you know, a quick launch and make a quick buck today. They're very intentional and they're doing a lot of planning. And then the fourth thing I see, and this one is a little controversial, but they are not afraid to spend money to get in front of people. And so this can take a couple different um, ways. Sometimes this looks like Facebook ads. So you're literally just paying to get in front of new people. Um, you're hopefully paying for leads. You want people to either sign up for your email list or um, you know, somehow opt into something that you can sell to them later in online marketing that is often you want them on your email list, but it could be you just want them to send you a direct message. You want to start engaging with them. You want to start building a relationship. Um, and my clients are not afraid to spend money on that. So what I think we see a lot in um, newer businesses, so maybe five figures or low six figures, is you can hustle uh, a fair bit. You can show up in Facebook groups and um, post and in engage. You can go on podcasts, although that's kind of a, a next level strategy um, to get you in front of more eyeballs that has more impact. But you can go on podcasts, you can attend conferences, you can um, do networking, you can, use your own time, energy, blood, sweat, and tears to get to put yourself in front of people. But what um, we see happening is, and if you are in, you know, this is 2019, this is not news to anyone, is that um, if you are just posting on social media, your organic reach, your, your ability to reach people without putting any money behind it is limited. And so what I see my seven and eight figure clients doing is they're doing all the other stuff too. They are engaging, they are going to conferences, they're usually speaking at the conference now rather than just attending, but they are willing to spend money on getting in front of people. Um, now, what I will say is this does not always get talked about. So you will hear someone talking about a million dollar launch or you'll hear someone say, you know, I had a, a six figure, I have a six figure recurring membership, but they don't always talk about what it costs to get those sales, to get in front of people and to actually turn them into customers. And so I will sometimes see my clients spending more on Facebook ads than they're actually making from a particular launch. And that is sometimes accidental just because sometimes the numbers don't work and it is sometimes on purpose and it's strategic because you may end up losing money on a lower dollar offer, but you're hoping that over time you can um, convert that customer into a higher priced offer and you will make money on them in the long in the long term. That is, these are all very advanced um, ways of doing business. These are not for the faint of heart because it, it takes a lot of money to be able to lose money on um, you know, your first interactions with a customer. Um, but I do think there is this curtain that is starting to be pulled out a little bit um, in the online world where people talk about their revenue and they don't talk about their expenses. And um, I think if you are especially newer in business and you haven't seen this and you are beating yourself up wondering why you don't have a six figure launch from XYZ, um, just know that um, especially for certain types of businesses, it costs a lot of money to get in front of people and to actually get those leads in the door and then to convert them and sell to them. Um, the other thing I think that is not talked about a lot that I see in my businesses is what a major part um, affiliate launches can play. And so this is another thing that um, can be very expensive. So a lot of the uh, big names, the you know seven and eight figure entrepreneurs uh, will launch their um, courses or their memberships or whatever offer they have through affiliates. So that means that they are sharing revenue with other people who are promoting the course or the membership for them. Um, often in this world, that, sh that revenue share can be as high as 50% or higher, which coming from a traditional corporate world seems bananas. I mean, the fact that you would share 50% of the revenue that you are bringing in 
uh, off the top, that is before you take out all your other expenses, your team, all the software you have to use, your Facebook ad costs, everything, you are taking that right off the top and sharing 50%. Um, as you can imagine, when you're subtracting all those other things, that can sometimes bring your profit down to a very low number. And so that is what is, I think, also not talked about in these launches is the tremendous spend on affiliate marketing. And that is real money. So, you know, you may say I had a $100,000 launch, but if most of that came through affiliates and you're paying them 50%, well, now you've got maybe a $50,000 launch and you've got a bunch of expenses. So maybe your profit is only 10 or 20. So I, I do see sometimes some very low, um, you know, we, we talk about gross is the, the first number, the top line number. And then once you take out all the expenses, the Facebook ads, the affiliate payouts, the team costs, uh, bringing in experts to help you, um, sometimes that bottom line, that net number is actually very small. And so I say this, not to um, say that there's anything wrong with that. There's lots of ways to run a business, but I think um, there is starting to be more openness in the online community about what it actually costs to run a million dollar online course business and what the take home is. And then you, as you're building your business, can decide, is that sustainable for me? Is that something that I'm interested in? It, do I wanna work this hard <laughs> for a $100,000 launch that I only bring home $10,000? You know, that's up to you. Uh, one of my favorite podcasts, um, and I'll give a shout out here, is the Get Paid podcast with Claire Pelletro. She's a Facebook ads expert, but she interviews online entrepreneurs and um, some of them, not all, but a lot of them are willing to talk real numbers with her. Um, and so that one is great if you want to dig in and see a little bit more behind the scenes of businesses. I am not often actually deep in the numbers, so this is more just an observation than anything. Um, but I do think it is a mindset shift um, that a lot of online entrepreneurs are making as they are scaling from six to seven figures is there just is not enough time in the day. There is not enough hustle to get in front of the number of eyeballs that you have to have to sell the amount that you are um, wanting to sell. Because at the end of the day, this is all just math. If you get in front of this many eyeballs, um, you know, we talk about a sales funnel for a reason. We start and it's big. And then maybe some of those people will sign up for our email list. Maybe some of those people will actually engage with us. Then maybe some will buy a low price offer. Some will buy a high price offer. And some will, very few will buy probably our highest priced thing. So by the time we get to the, the bottom of the funnel, it's very narrow, but those are very valuable customers because they are, um, engaged with us, they love what we have, and they will buy our high, high price thing. Um, and so to get the number of people at the top in that big bucket, to get down to the narrow bucket at the bottom, um, can be very expensive. So the mindset shift of realizing that, um, you know, leads aren't free, <laughs> um, and that they're, there, there has to be some investment. It's either you're gonna be your time, your energy, your blood, sweat, and tears, or it's gonna be money um, through Facebook ads, through affiliates, through other ways, other paid traffic sources. It could be Google AdWords, depending on your audience. It could be Pinterest uh, ads. It could, you know, there's lots of different options, but typically paid traffic is going to be a factor when you are at the seven and certainly eight figure mark. So I'm gonna wrap up. I hope that was helpful. Um, and as you are thinking about your 2020 plans, I would love to hear from you what you have um, in mind. If you are not already in our Facebook group, the Legal Roadmap Facebook group is a really fun place to hang out. We uh, It's full of online entrepreneurs and creatives and um, we ask questions. We talk about legal stuff, but also business stuff. So if you're not already in there, I invite you to find that on Facebook and join us. We pop in there, I answer questions, my team answers questions as well. So I hope to see you there and I hope that you have a great week. I will talk to you next week with our episode on next week. I'm interviewing Heather Hubbard, who is a phenomenal business coach. Um, you may have heard of her. She had, she is a former lawyer, a recovering lawyer, but she now coaches um, women business owners and entrepreneurs and women just with big goals. So she uh, has something really exciting she's working on and I interviewed her on the podcast uh, so that'll be next week's episode, episode 117.